Can somebody lift up your hands into the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus right now? The Spirit of God is moving all over this house. Come on, lift up your hands and just begin to call on the name that's above every name. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. Thank you, Jesus, for the moving of your spirit. Thank you for the demonstration of your spirit and power here today. This is what we have come for. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for the moving, the working of your spirit. Can somebody clap your hands? And can somebody shout hallelujah? Come on, somebody lift up your voice and shout once again with victory. Friday night, Friday night, the word of the Lord went forth about the struggle for the future. The lockup, the lightning hitting the building, everything that transpired on Friday was because there was spiritual warfare going on. And there was a decision that was being made by this local assembly concerning the future. And today is the fruit. Today is the confirmation of that decision. We can't make it without the Holy Ghost. I said we can't make it without the Spirit of God. Brother Hoffie, in 1995, our church in Memphis experienced a hundred soul revival. It was in that revival, just like today, the Holy Ghost got to moving. The great evangelist, Brother Greg Godwin, didn't get a chance to preach. I was hoping the same thing today. But I respect your pastor. I respect your elders. Amen. But the Holy Ghost began to move. It was in between my sophomore and junior year. I had broken my leg at church camp, Brother Thomas. I had hoop dreams. I wanted to play in the NBA, but it was just a dream. But I'll never forget, I had two broken bones and a hairline fracture all the way down to my ankle. They had cut my cast from my hip down to my knee. They told me I had three more months to go. But in a service just like this, as the Spirit of God began to move, I heard a voice speak to me and say, Ethan, if you will get down the aisle, I will heal your leg. I looked around to see who it was talking to me. But people were responding to the presence of God. And so I closed my eyes. I lifted up my hands once again. And I heard that voice whisper in my ear, Ethan, if you get out of the aisle and praise me, I will heal your leg. Brother Johnston, I didn't obey the first time. I didn't obey the second time. I thought it was my youth pastor's wife talking to me. Sister Doreen, but she's from northern Mississippi and she talked like this. I said, it ain't Sister Doreen talking to me. There are people run the aisles. There are people that have their hands raised, tears streaming down their face. And so I said, Lord, if you'll speak to me one more time, I will obey you. Ladies and gentlemen, I heard that voice. As sure as I'm speaking to you here today, said to me, Ethan, if you'll get down the aisle and praise me, I will heal your leg. Brother, Sister Burns, I obeyed the Lord the third time. I hobble out. Amen. Cast all the way up to my knee. Pain shooting through my body. But I just simply obey the Lord. And as I began to obey the Lord, I began to worship God like you all were doing here today. And all of a sudden, this began to happen. And then all of a sudden, I began to do this. And all of a sudden, I began to do this. I began to praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, I got down with some of my friends. We begin to dance and shout. We got lost in the spirit. You know what needs to happen? Somebody needs to go ahead and get lost in the spirit. Forget about what somebody else is thinking about you. Go ahead and let the Holy Ghost. uh, The Bible says, uh, be not drunk with wine uh, where it is excess, uh, but be filled with the spirit. Uh, Somebody needs to get drunk in the Holy Ghost. We began to dance and shout. We passed out. My buddy who was 275 pounds, the football player, fell on my leg. I could hear people say, get him off of Ethan's leg, get him off of Ethan's leg. But I was in the spirit. Went home that night. And Brother Bland, I felt pain shooting up in my body. I thought, oh my God, did I make a mistake? But my dear precious mother, who's going to be with the Lord, Elder Scott, 
She said, if the Lord told you to do it, you trust God. True story. I went to the doctor the next day. He took all the scans, the x-rays. He came back, and that old Jewish doctor looked at me and said, Ethan, have you been drinking milk? I said, look at me, doctor. Does it look like I've been drinking milk? He said, well, you've been doing something because your bone is perfectly healed. You can out your cast today. Somebody, you obeyed the word of the Lord today. You got out and you came to this altar. And you need to go ahead and claim your healing right now. Come on, don't wait until the doctor says it. Your great physician has already touched you. Somebody begin to give God praise once again. I wonder, can you begin to glorify him and magnify him? Clap your hands once again into the wonderful name of the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. I was not one to preach here today, but I had three elders that came and gave me a word. And then your pastor sought out his pastoral elders. And I feel that the Lord has got a word for us here today. As I mentioned Friday, we have not come just to make friends, even though we have so many friends here. But we have come to do the will of God. If you want the will of God, can you lift up your hands? Can you lift up your voice once again? And can somebody give praise, honor, and glory to the name of Jesus right now? Come on, somebody lift up your voice once again and say, Lord, have your way. I'm thankful for healing. I'm thankful for the miraculous which is here today. But can I tell somebody in this house that the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. And if you are here, you have not yet been forgiven of your past. If you've not yet been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus and filled with his spirit, today is your day. If you believe that, can somebody clap your hands and can somebody shout hallelujah. It's called Moab. M-O-A-B. Which is short for the mother of all burgers. There are restaurants and fast food joints that claim to have the biggest burger. But this particular one tips the scales literally. You can find it and try to devour it. The key word is try. At the B-52's restaurant located in Invergrove Heights in Minnesota. Are there any Minnesotans in here today? The mother of all burgers served at B-52's in the Twin Cities consists of two pounds of burger, four eggs, barbecue pork, cheddar, pepper jack, onion strings, and bacon, served on a 15-inch French loaf. They offer a free t-shirt to anyone who is brave enough to eat it all in one hour. Now, you might be brave enough, but you might not be bright enough if you try to do that in one hour. But you at least get a free T-shirt. You won't get a free meal, but you will get a free T-shirt and a bill for $36.99, as well as the mother of all stomach aches. Now, when I first said Moab, the mother of all, some of you might have thought that I was going to refer to the GBU 43B Massive Ordinance Air Blast Bomb, which is also known as the mother of all bombs. The U.S. Air Force has described it as its largest non-nuclear conventional weapon, weighing in at 21,600 pounds, 9,840 kilograms. The mother of all bombs is packed with 11 tons of high explosives. On April the 13th, 2017, some of you might remember that this bomb was dropped on an ISIS complex in Afghanistan, making it the most powerful weapon ever used in combat up to that point. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here this afternoon to preach to you about burgers or bombs, belly aches, or weapons of mass destruction. But I've come to preach to you Jesus and to point somebody to the mother of us all. The Apostle Paul writes about her in Galatians chapter 4, verse number 26, when he says, Jerusalem, 
which is above, is free, is the mother of us all. Can somebody say the mother of us all? Paul wasn't talking about an early, uh, an earthly city located in the Middle East. He wasn't talking about a flashpoint city still being fought over by the Palestinians, even though it's in the control and claim by Israel. He was talking about that city known as the holy city that the psalmist described in Psalms chapter 48, verses 1 and 2, when he said, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the size of the north, the city of the great king. No, that's not what he was talking about. Paul wasn't referring to a place uh, located here on earth. He wasn't talking about that place uh, where Jesus lamented over when he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, the one who kills the prophets uh, and stones those who are sent to her. How often would I gather you together as hen gathers her chicks uh, under her wings, uh, but you were not willing. No, Paul wasn't referring to the city where our Lord was crucified a week before he was celebrated in the city a week before. No, that's not what Paul was talking about. He wasn't referring to the Jerusalem here on earth, but the Jerusalem which is above. Most scholars believe that Paul was referring to the heavenly Jerusalem, that new Jerusalem that John wrote about in Revelation when he described that holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This makes sense. It seems like the obvious answer. Matter of fact, one scholar writes that rabbinical teaching held that the Jerusalem above was the heavenly archetype that in the messianic period would be let down to earth. This would have been what John was describing. This could have been what Paul was referring to. But an application I will submit to you here today can be made concerning this Jerusalem, which is above. That is more than just an idea. It's more than just a celestial paradise situated in another realm, some far off stratosphere. But the application can be made today that this Jerusalem that the Apostle Paul was referring to, this Jerusalem which is above is an experience that gives you a taste of assurance of that heavenly Jerusalem. Let me say it again, this Jerusalem that Paul was referring to, that Jerusalem which is above, is more than just an idea, is more than just some far off place. But ladies and gentlemen, this Jerusalem, amen, can also be applied to the experience that a person, amen, receives that gives them an assurance that there really is a heavenly Jerusalem. It's an experience that first took place in the physical Jerusalem. In an upper room, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and when the day of Pentecost uh, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, uh, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, uh, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all uh, filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and began to speak with other tongues uh, as the Spirit gives them utterance. Can I tell somebody? here today. Uh, Maybe you are a guest here for the first time uh, and you don't understand what happened here a moment ago uh, but you feel something. You know amen that God is real uh, and you know that God is moving upon you. You you just don't know how to respond. Can I tell you uh, that this experience isn't just for those who were back then uh, in the Bible days uh, but can I tell somebody in this place uh, that Peter declared that the promise uh, is unto you uh, and to your children uh, and to all that are far off east even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Does the sanctuary still believe that God is calling people to salvation? If you believe that, can somebody stand to your feet? Can you put your hands together and can you lift up your voice and give God glory right now? Oh, here we go. Come on, turn somebody and tell them we are identified by the promise. Turn somebody and tell them we are identified by the promise. 
Can I let somebody know in this place you may be seated, uh, amen, that God desires to fill everybody in North County with the Holy Ghost. Uh, he desires to fill everybody in St. Louis with the Holy Ghost. Uh, he desires to fill everybody in this St. Louis metro with the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, I thank God for the healings. Uh, I thank God for the miracles that took place around this altar. But let, can I remind somebody in this house uh, that nothing can compare to the miracle of salvation. Uh, when your sins are forgiven, uh, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, hey, not come and tell somebody you can be healed physically you can be healed mentally but if you're not here spiritually nothing else matters uh, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life uh, nothing else matters the Lord wants to do more than just heal your body he wants to do more than just heal your mind uh, but I come and tell somebody the Lord wants to save your soul uh, he wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost today uh, if you believe that can somebody at the sanctuary help me for a second uh, because God's about to pour out his spirit uh, in this place uh, come on somebody Clap your hands like you got the Holy Ghost. If you're Holy Ghost happy, if you're Holy Ghost happy, somebody put your hands together and lift up your voice and give God glory right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 4, verses 22 and 23, the apostle Paul writes, it is written that Abraham had two sons. Can somebody say two sons? The one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bomb woman was born according to the flesh. Can somebody say the flesh? And then the scripture goes on to tell us that the other was of the free woman who was born through promise. Can somebody say promise? The apostle Paul went on to write in verse number 28. Now we, brothers and sisters, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. Can somebody say the spirit? Even so, it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Can somebody shall free? He said that we. Just like Isaac are the children of promise. We are identified by the promise. Can somebody say the promise? Paul was using an analogy, an allegory, to make a spiritual point in defense of the gospel that he preached. There was those in Paul's day who were trying to bring the Galatians into observance of the ceremonial and dietary laws of Moses. They were saying you can't have any cheeseburgers. You can't eat any pizza. You can't have anything that is unhealthy but tastes good. They were trying to get the Galatians church to get back into bondage. Somebody hear me right now. I have a word of the Lord, Elder Scott. Amen. And I'm telling this church right now, I stand here in the fear of God. Amen. They were trying to get the Galatian church to come in to bondage. But Paul wanted them to understand and to be reminded that Jesus Christ has set them free from the bondage of sin and the mere religious customs demanded by the Mosaic law. He wasn't saying that God's moral law doesn't matter because God's moral law is still intact as well as his desire for his people to live holy. But the requirement to be circumcised and to eat kosher, especially for Gentiles, wasn't a requirement for salvation according to the gospel. So Paul, in his analogy, speaks about two different covenants by figuratively contrasting Sarah and her maidservant Hagar with Hagar representing the Mosaic covenant given at Mount Sinai and Sarah referring to the new covenant sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ on Mount Calvary. It was delivered by his spirit on the day of Pentecost. That's why Paul, amen, said, Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Because he was reminding the church back then in Galatians uh, that they, amen, were not delivered by just mere religion. Uh, they were not delivered just by going through the motions of religion. Uh, but it was because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, it was because of the spirit of God that came and set them free. Uh, amen. They became a part of that heavenly Jerusalem. That Jerusalem which is above, that is experienced here on earth, that is the mother of us all. 
And then Paul goes on to quote a prophecy written by Isaiah. From that prophecy, he helps the church understand that you are one time barren, but now you are becoming fruitful as opposed to just mere Old Testament religion. Paul refers to the sons of Hagar and Sarah, one born according to the desires of the flesh and the other according to the promise. Amen. I just want to ask here today, how many of you know that God is a promise keeper. I said, how many know that God is a, a promise keeper? Amen. Paul said one was born according to Abraham and Sarah who tried to get ahead of God. They had already been promised. But because of them trying to do it on their own, they end up having Abraham and Hagar end up having a son by the name of Ishmael. But I come to tell somebody that when God makes you a promise. He intends to keep it even when it doesn't seem like it's going to come to pass on your time. But I wonder, does anybody know that God is still our own time God? I said, does anybody believe that God is still our own time God? Can you shout hallelujah? I come to remind somebody in this house that when God makes you a promise, you can trust him. Amen. One scholar said a promise is a word from God that will be fulfilled by God. You just got away on the Lord. Can I connect, amen, Thursday night to some of you that were not here, but you were, amen, here in the spirit. Uh, can I just connect you to what was said on Thursday night, uh, that you've just got to wait on God. Uh, you've got to understand that you have a God-given destiny. Amen. Don't you give up. Uh, don't you give in. Uh, amen. Don't you get ahead of God because it will only cause you pain uh, and it will only cause you grief. But if you will wait on the Lord, the Lord will fulfill his promise to you. Can I remind us here today? Amen. I'm preaching to, to those who are not just uh, been a part of this church for many years, but to those who are brand new, uh, that the enemy will try to condemn you and tell you that you can't make it. Can I remind you in this place uh, that we have all made the same mistakes before? We've all got ahead of God or did something contrary to his plan of our own doing. We've all made mistakes like Abraham. We've all made poor choices at some point in our lives, uh, and there are consequences to the choices uh, that we make, whether good or bad. But God uh, has a way of turning around some of those choices uh, that you, amen, can have hope, uh, that you can somehow have a future. I said God is able to turn around some of those choices uh, that you've made, uh, those unspiritual, poor, bad choices. Uh, he could turn around, uh, and he can work it together for his good. Abraham had an Ishmael. He had a son by Hagar. He got ahead of God. But can I tell somebody that nobody is a mistake? I said nobody is a mistake. There are some individuals in this place. Uh, you haven't been a part of the sanctuary. You don't know what it means to be a part of a Pentecostal church. Uh, but you've grown up in a home uh, that's told you that you're a mistake. Uh, you've grown up in a world uh, that's told you that you are a mistake. That you're no good. Uh, that you don't matter. That you're not going to make it. But can I tell somebody in this place that the devil is a liar? I said the devil is a liar. You are not a mistake. Turn somebody and tell them you're not a mistake. When Hagar fled from Sarah for the first time, the angel of the Lord spoke to her and told her that God had a plan for her life and that he had a plan for her child, that her child had a future. The Lord God gave her hope and told her that she was to name her son Ishmael, which means God hears. God hears. The Lord heard the cry of her affliction. But the Bible says that Hagar told the Lord, you are the God who sees me. Can I remind somebody that not only does God hear you, but he also sees you. He knows exactly where you are. Amen. You're not going to always be in this facility. You're not going to always be in this building. You're going to walk out of these door, doors and you're going to be, amen, hit once again with reality of the world that we live in. Uh, but can I tell somebody that God knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. Can I remind somebody in this place uh, that even when you can't feel him, he's still working. Uh, even when you can't see it, he sees you. Uh, and if our God knows exactly where you are, he knows how to deliver to you the promise uh, that he has made to you. Can somebody lift up your hands? Uh, can somebody lift up your voice right now? So it's here in Galatians chapter 4 that Paul reminds us that Isaac 
is the son of promise. And that like Isaac, those who have been born again of the water and of the spirit are the children of promise. I come to tell somebody if you have been baptized in Jesus' name, if you spoke in tongues when the Holy Ghost came, you are identified by the promise. I said, if you have been baptized in the only saving name of Jesus, if you have been filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, you have been identified by the promise. And can I tell somebody that your identity, amen, is not so much wrapped up in your work. Your identity is not so much wrapped up in your last name. Your identity is not so much wrapped up in your bank account, your 401k. Your identity is not so much wrapped up in your educational level. Can I let somebody know here that your identity is not so much wrapped up in your zip code. But if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, if you've been filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost, your identity is connected with the promise. Oh, has anybody been baptized in Jesus' name? Have you spoken tongues when the Holy Ghost came? Can somebody clap your hands and can you give God praise right now? Can I remind us here today that like Isaac, you have been born according to the Spirit. You are not of the flesh, but of the Spirit. You're, amen. You haven't just become a part of some mere religion, but you are connected to the very essence of Almighty God, the Holy Spirit. Can I remind us today that Pentecost is not a religion? I said Pentecost is not just another denomination, but it is an experience. It is a God encounter that leads you into a deeper relationship with the Lord. Does anybody want to have a deeper relationship with the Lord? You want more than just a thrill. You want more than just a feel-good moment. You want to do more than just check off your lifts and go out to the restaurant. But does anybody want to draw closer to God? Can you stand to your feet? Can you lift up your hands? And can you praise the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus right now? Remain standing with me all over this house. Years ago, I was at a camp meeting, and it was a camp meeting that was in my birth state. I had moved when I was just two years of age, and I was so thrilled to get a chance to go to that state to be a minister of the word of the Lord. I left a happening revival where people were receiving the Holy Ghost. There were miracles, signs, and wonders. There was a man who was miraculously healed. I was telling about my leg, just like I just told a few moments ago, and there was a man who had shattered his ankle. And I saw him, and I just wanted to, to, to just use him as an example. And when I did, the ministers got around him and began to pray for that man who had shattered his ankle. All of a sudden, he began to jump up, and he began to dance. Praise God, the Lord miraculously healed him. There were miracles, signs, and wonders. But the Lord told me to head to a revival in this other state. And in that revival, amen, as I began to make my way past the blood, I had such just terrible migraine headaches. And so when I got there, all I did was preach about the Holy Ghost. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that that pastor was not happy. He wanted me to operate in the gifts. He wanted me to call out people. And Brother Burns, Sister Burns, I love you so much. Sister Burns was my wife's Sunday school teacher. You've preached me many years, Brother Burns. You know my ministry. Amen. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Praise God. I said, I believe in the gifts. I believe in what happened here a few moments ago. Does anybody believe, amen, what happened here a few moments ago, that that's of God? Somebody say, yeah, preacher, I believe it so much. I don't think you need to preach. I understand. Me neither. I didn't want to preach. Praise God. But I believe in it. But that, pastor, that, that, that pastor, he didn't like the fact that, that I didn't call somebody out. Matter of fact, the next week, as the Spirit of God was moving, I made a mistake, Dr. J. I made a mistake. After the camp meeting, we had went to camp meeting. After that camp meeting, there was a pastor who had come to that service. And the Holy Ghost revealed to me that he was already typed up his resurrection letter that he was going back to his church to resign. I did not know him from Adam. And I made a mistake. Amen. I called him out. I told him when I did, that pastor got so excited. The people began to rejoice, and the Lord smote me. And he said, that's not what I want. Amen. You're not to do that. You were supposed to speak to the rock instead of strike the rock. Dr. Norris, I made a mistake. The Lord convicted me. Well, I said all that to share this. In between those two services, we had camp meeting. And in that camp meeting, the wonderful presence of God began to move. The camp evangelist was Brother Jason Sisko, who I considered to have a prophetic ministry. 
there were healings. There were so many wonderful things. And it was one of those services, Brother and Sister French, that, that when the Holy Ghost gets to move, you want to linger a little bit. Praise God. You don't want to just rush out. You just want to, oh, get all that you can. In that service, I, my son was just a, a little tyke, and I, I had him on my, my shoulders, and we were pray, praising and dancing and glorifying God in that service, just like today. Let me just say this. You know you got an awesome pastor. When he can just allow the Holy Ghost to hit him like that. Woo! You broke something because you are the angel of this church. Ooh, I feel a prophetic anointing now. I'm not a prophet, neither son of a prophet, but I cannot tell you right now. Amen, Brother Bland. God has chosen you to lead in this generation. And the enemy has tried to make you feel insignificant. He has tried to make you shrink back, amen, from some of the responsibilities. Now, you, you take it serious, uh, but he's trying to say, you're not this, you're not that, you're not this, not that. Uh, but I have a word for you, Brother Bland. Uh, amen, God's about to take you to another level. Amen, you're about to lead this St. Louis metro area into one of the greatest revivals uh, because you're kingdom-minded. Amen. It's not about you. Uh, you're not just in it for you. Uh, amen. Like Brother Dugas, uh, like your predecessor, Brother Graham, uh, you understand it that the kingdom of God has got to go forward. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, the anointing flows down. Uh, if God did that for your pastor here today, understand uh, something has broken in the spirit for you, uh, for your family, for your health, uh, for your finances, uh, for your ministry. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. In that camp meeting, when it all ended, I thank God for those who are talented and gifted running the sound. But there was a group that was there that was not a part of us. And I thank God for everybody. I don't believe in belittling anybody. Because ladies and gentlemen, the Lord brought us all from somewhere. And if we would just allow the Lord to work in his grace, he can lead people to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And in that place, I'm not against fog machines. But I'll never forget they began to run the sound again after the service was over. People had left. They ran the fog machine, and they began to feel that tabernacle. And I said, you know what? It's awesome that they can do that. And I'm not against any of that. But the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, they're trying to manufacture what only I can do. How many know that there's a difference between the real deal and the counterfeit? I was reminded... When I was in secular college, before I came here to Gateway, the Lord saved my roommate, we have revival at Tennessee State University. But it was in an old-fashioned prayer meeting at my aunt's church. She was a part of another apostolic organization, the Cool JC. And in that prayer meeting, uh, that all-night prayer meeting, i never forget, as we began to pray, we lingered there. And as it was time to get ready to go, I opened up my eyes, and I saw a blue haze. Sister C. Graves, we love you. Amen. We thank God for you. But we saw that blue haze. I, I rubbed my eyes. I thought, you know what? This church is in the hood. Maybe it's marijuana. I didn't smell anything. I walked outside. It was as clear as crystal. I walked back on the inside, and there was that blue haze, that thick presence of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't say anything to anybody. But about two weeks later, my dear roommate who received the Holy Ghost, who was baptized in Jesus' name, he's now a licensed minister in the Wisconsin district, serving God. He's won all of his family to the Lord. His brother-in-law started an apostolic church. Amen. But he came to me. He said, Ethan, he said, you know that prayer meeting that we went to? He was raised Catholic. He didn't know anything about all this. He just said, Ethan, that prayer meeting that we went to, he said, while we were getting ready to leave, I opened up my eyes, and I got to admit I slept a little bit. You know, I was raised Catholic. I don't know how y'all Pentecostals do it, but when I opened my eyes, I saw a blue haze in that tabernacle. He said, I thought it was just me, so I went outside. And when I went outside, it was clear as crystal. And when I came back in, I saw that blue haze. Can I tell somebody here today that we cannot manufacture a move of God, but we can submit to the Spirit. We're not the children of the flesh. There are a whole lot of people that can mimic it, that can imitate it. But what happened here just a few moments ago, only God can do. Can somebody lift up your hands unto the Lord? Can somebody lift up your voice? 
This is why I locked up, Brother Bland. Because the Lord has brought this church to a juncture. Yes, you are a great church. Yes, you are a flagship church. Yes, you are an influential church. Not just in our fellowship, but in, amen, the apostolic movement. But the Lord has brought this church to a decision. And that decision is this. Either allow the Ishmaelites of your life, the mistakes to keep you from all that God has for you, or allow what God has promised you to be fulfilled in your life. Does anybody want all that God has for you? I come to tell somebody, if you want all that God has for you as an individual, as a family, as a church family, then you have to disconnect from what would keep you from receiving all that God has for you. There are some people that you have to disconnect from and let go. There are some things from your past, from your present, that you have to give up if you want all that God has for your future. There are some situations that you can't run away from, and there are some people that you just can't divorce and get rid of without proper biblical reason. But if you want to be free, if you want to be a child of promise, a child of of liberty, a child of freedom. If you want all that God has for you, you've got to make that choice. Do you want what only the flesh can produce? Or do you want what only God can produce by His Spirit? Because only the Spirit can bring freedom and liberty. There are some individuals that you've been touched by God physically, but spiritually, you're still bound by pain. From the past you're still bound by mistakes that you've made the enemy has still got you locked up by addiction amen but i come to tell you that the holy ghost is in this house and the only reason why that the elders in your pastor have me to preach because there are some individuals in this place that the lord wants you to be set free paul said stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith christ has made you free and be entangled again with the yoke abundance. I wonder, can somebody make a choice today by stepping out of your seat uh, and saying amen while you make your way to this altar? I want what the Holy Ghost can produce. Uh, I don't want just another service. Uh, I don't want just another cute sermon. Uh, I want more than just another great song, uh, but I want what only the Spirit of God can produce. Come on somebody. There is a choice. Uh, we are identified by the promise. Uh, like Isaac, we are not the children of the flesh, uh, but we are the children of the promise. Uh, Come on, somebody, let the Holy Spirit do for you what only he can do. If you are here today and you've not yet received the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, come on, today is your day. Today is your day. Come on, my brother here with the gap. With the gap. Come on, I want you to come all the way. Make your way all the way up here. Come on, make your way all the way up here. If you are here today and you've not yet received the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, come on, come on up right. Come on, come and lift up your hands. Come on, you help me preach today because I'm reaching for you. Come on, lift up your hands. God's got a promise for you. Come on, hallelujah. Come on up here. Come on, this is what it's all about. St. Louis needs to be reached. It's got to be more than just us feeling good. But there's somebody else that's got to experience the promise. Come on, I'm thankful that you're identified by the promise. But God wants to do it for somebody else right now. Come on, can you reach over to somebody beside you? Come on, let's allow the Holy Spirit to work. 